Hey folks, welcome to Mogul Sierra Vineyards. We've really been missing you these days. I've noticed when people come to the vineyard for tasting, they come because they like to drink wine. They like to socialize with the other customers in the tasting room, and they also want to learn more about the process of making wine. So here's a quick video on making some wine. We're going to start with planting. The end of April is a perfect time to plant the new vines. They arrive from the grower in big cardboard boxes, and they really look like sticks with roots on them. We plant about 10 of these between each of the big wooden poles. The poles are used to string up the wires that form the trellis that support the grapevines. Each of the new plants is placed into a plastic sleeve. These sleeves provide protection for the plant against the chewing of various rodents and other animals. They create a little mini habitat, much more humid and warmer than the outside air. This will prevent the grapevines from drying out on a breezy afternoon. The sleeves help to encourage the plant to grow vertically, not branching out until it reaches the first of the wires. The sleeves will be left in place until the end of the first growing season. To encourage good root development and strong, sturdy canes, we cut off all of the blossoms during the first two springs. Over the course of the summer, the fields will need regular mowing and weeding. The vines will be trimmed and trained and trellised. The foliage will be regularly inspected for mold and mildew and disease. Insect damage will be minimized through the use of traps and the use of beneficial insects. The birds particularly love the ripening grapes, and they will be discouraged through the use of gas cannons and the playing of predator bird calls. Harvest time at Mogul Sierra Vineyard starts with the harvesting of the red grapes, the St. Croix and the Marquettes. This usually occurs in mid-September, but it's always driven by the grapes themselves. Are their sugar levels high enough to make good wine? Sugar levels in grapes is measured in a unit called bricks. And you need enough bricks so that the yeast can do its job, eating up that sugar and converting it into alcohol. Harvest time at Mogul Sierra Vineyard is a great opportunity for the friends of the vineyard to come together and help. Harvesting is even more fun when small groups or families work together on either side of a row. After our volunteers have signed in, they might grab a quick coffee, grab some of our safety cutters, and a big yellow bin, and head for the field. Many of our harvest volunteers come and bring their families. We really enjoy having the children in the vineyard, and our cutters are specially designed so they cannot hurt themselves. As the harvesters fill their bins, they leave them behind in the rows to be picked up with the golf carts. The full bins are gathered up, placed on the tractor, and driven up to the crush pad. Our crush pad is located right behind the tasting room. It's a huge big tent filled with these big gray totes, insulated containers for holding the crushed grapes. Here the bins are emptied into a machine called a crusher destemmer. There's a large auger in the bottom that pulls the grapes down against a stainless steel grate where the grapes get crushed. Gravity helps all of the grape parts to fall down into the tote while the stems are pushed out the side and are collected in a wheelbarrow. This process continues until all the grapes are crushed. When the totes are full, the crushed grapes, now called the must, is left to ferment. Red wines undergo a primary fermentation on the skins to help develop the red color for the wine and increase the tannins. As the yeast eats the sugars, alcohol is produced as well as heat and carbon dioxide. The gas causes many of the solids to rise to the top, creating a cap. It's important to reintegrate the cap into the must before it can dry out. This process is called punching down. Just turn this one over. It just bubbles right up. Get rid of the gas. That's why it comes up like that. Yeah. So we got we got it cooking. And definitely the, te the temperature is there. While the reds are busy with their primary fermentation, it's time for us to turn our attention now to the white wines. In about a week, we'll be back in the field picking the white wine grapes. These grapes should not be left in contact with their skins any longer than necessary. 
So on the day we pick them, we also have to crush and press. Initially, the press functions as a giant strainer, and as we fill it, grape juice leaks out along the perforations on the sides. The juice is transferred to a large stainless steel tank. This large orange object is a bladder that, when filled with air, expands and squeezes the contents against the interior of the press. When the press is full, we secure the lid and we inflate the bladder to extract as much juice as possible. Here is what the inside of the press looks like after the bladder has been expanded and deflated. And here in the wheelbarrow is what was left in the press after it got done doing its job. The first press we owned here at Mogul Sierra was a small wooden one. It worked the same way as the stainless steel press, but had less capacity and was subject to blowouts. Over the next six months to three years, the magic happens. The freshly pressed grape juice that was placed in the toasted oak barrels or in the stainless steel takes slowly turns into fine wine. The developing wine will need to be regularly tasted and tested. It's important to know what the current levels are of the acidity, the alcohol, and the residual sugars. The barrels and tanks will need to be racked. Racking separates the wine from the leavings, the sediment caused by the die-off of the yeast, and the settling of any grape solids that survive the pressing. This process aids in the clarification and inhibits the development of any unwanted flavors. Every summer here at Mogul Sierra Vineyard has different growing conditions. These variances in weathers affect the flavors of the grapes and their flavor profiles change from year to year. About one month prior to bottling, the wines are blended. Our goal is to create a product that is consistent as possible from year to year. Our bottling machine fills six bottles at a time, and when filled, each bottle is passed off to the man running the corking machine. When Mago Sierra first started producing its wine, we used traditional natural corks. These are punched from sheets of bark harvested from the cork oak trees. It takes 25 years before the bark becomes thick enough on these trees to harvest, and then can only be harvested once every nine years. We now use the agglomerate or composite corks that are composed of what was left over after the natural cork was pressed from the bark. This residue is ground up molded under heat and high pressure. After the cork has been placed in the bottle, it is handed off to the label machine. Here is where the government approved labels are individually applied to each bottle. Shrink capsules or collars are placed over the necks of the bottles. Their primary purpose is to prevent the corks from drying out. These collars are now heated, causing them to shrink tightly to the neck of the bottle. And off the bottle goes into the case. Our house white is a naked Chardonnay blend. When a winemaker tells you his wine is naked, he means he fermented it in stainless steel. This Long Island grown Chardonnay with a splash of Pinot Blanc is cold fermented, made in small batches to deliver delicate flavors with a bouquet of fresh apple and a clean, smooth finish. The Sunset White is a blend of Chardonnay and a dry Riesling. This wine has a nice, crisp, clean feel to it and has notes of citrus, and apple. Our Rendezvous is a mouth-watering blend of Long Island-grown Riesling, Chardonnay, and estate-grown Cayuga or Tremonet. It is a refreshing accompaniment to fine dining. The label was painted by the owner's oldest brother. It's an original watercolor featuring the sailboat sailed by the baby brother. This scene takes place in the Thames River, and if you look carefully, you can see the new London ledge light as well as the funky cottage on Hobbs Island. Ledgered House Rosé. This delicate, smooth, and semi-dry finishing wine is a blend of our estate-grown St. Croix grapes and Cayuga and Tremonet. The House Red is a blend of our estate-grown St. Croix grapes and our estate-grown Marquette grapes. There's a little splash of Susau in there just to smooth out and increase the fruit-forward taste. The St. Croix wine is made from the St. Croix grapes that were developed at the University of Minnesota. These grapes are hand-picked and cold fermented in small batches and aged in French oak barrels to deliver intense flavors with a smooth finish. The Sunset Red is Long Island grown Syrah aged in French oak and we have blended that with some St. Croix and Sousao resulting in a full body dry red wine. 
We would like to invite you to join us here at Mogul Sierra Vineyards for a tasting after the social distancing restrictions have been lifted. In the meanwhile, you can purchase our wines online for pickup at the vineyard. Special discounts apply to volume purchases. We are also offering free delivery for qualifying purchases for customers located within 50 miles of the vineyard.